when I first started working with the foundation in 2015, it's over five years now, uh, an immediate realization I had is that the starting point to talk about circular economy where it's very different. So in Europe, basically the resource scarcity was an important aspect, an important trigger to talk about it. Um, here in Latin America and the Caribbean region, it's actually the opposite. We talk about um, a circular economy in the, the most resource abundant regions in the world and the most biodiverse one. Um, so it's, but also it is very reliant on the extractive linear models and the extractive industries. And, and hence, um, what happened in the in the last centuries uh, is that the region didn't really sustain um, economic growth. It didn't add much value to the region's um, uh, natural resources, and it it also didn't um, successfully distributed the wealth uh, um, in the society. So when we talk about a circular economy here, uh, it is it, it's, it remains an important solutions framework to some of the biggest challenges of our times, like climate crisis, the loss of biodiversity, waste and pollution. Um, it, it still needs to have a design approach, one that concentrates effort in the upstream solution and, and based on the same principles of eliminating waste and pollution, of keeping materials and products in use and regenerating natural systems. Um, but I think what really adds value to the Latin American and Caribbean continent is about creating and adding, adding value, uh, regenerative value to its abundant natural resources. It is about the, the very important and core aspect of a circular economy, which is to create a resilient and distributed and diverse and inclusive economy that will create prosperity to all in the long term. How do we regenerate natural systems and circulate value in one of the most resource abundant regions in the world? The Foundation's Luisa Santiago, who's part of our team there at Latin America, talks about a different starting point for the region, but still driven by those three principles and all underpinned by design. In this video, we're going to hear a lot more about the circular economy in Latin America, and we're also going to hear about the recently launched Latin America and Caribbean Circular Economy Coalition, which aims to create alignment and a joined up vision for countries across the region. Next up, we'll hear from Rose, the director at the UN's Climate Technology Center and Networks, or CTCN, who will talk about their experience of working with countries in the region on their circular economy strategies and their learnings from it. And then we'll hear from Rolando Castro, the vice minister for environment and energy in Costa Rica, and he'll talk about the national decarbonization plan in Costa Rica and the circular economy role within it. And so starting 2018, it was very interesting for us to see um, countries in the Latin American region coming to us requesting for support on Secular on their secular economy. And so by 2019, we had finalized the initial discussions with the first four or five countries to start supporting them. And what really countries wanted was a, a comprehensive approach. So they said, we want to start off with a roadmap to really understand what a future of secularity would look like in our countries. Where are the options? What are the obstacles and challenges we currently face and how could we possibly deal with them? What kind of partnerships um, should we have for both public and private sector to enhance our circularity work? And of course, most importantly, for the work we do at the CTCM, what kind of technologies would we need uh, to build a very successful and effective circular industry across all sectors in the Latin American region. And I think my colleagues have mentioned something extremely important. Uh, Latin America is extremely resource rich and the level of extraction is intense. A lot of this um, extraction has remained exactly at that level with varying degrees of um, industrialization and production in countries, but largely the volume of wealth and extraction in the continent is not reflected at all in the level of industrialization. And so one of the things we are learning as we work with the countries and developing their circular economies is how to literally leapfrog, as it were, go into industrialization best off of the rich resource um, availability into a systems production that is circular. I think there's a real opportunity there. 
And yes, uh, Costa Rica launched his decarbonization plan in February 2019. And it's a very ambitious plan to decarbonize our economy by 2050. Even though Costa Rica has done important achievements in terms of um, electricity, for instance, we have an electricity matrix that is based on renewable energy, almost 100%. And also we were able to stop um, deforestation. We also have a lot of challenges in terms of uh, contributions to the uh, CO2 emissions. For instance, transportation, industry, agriculture, agri agriculture um, land development, construction, and so on. So the dec decarbonization plan sets goals for all these important topics. And uh, we are trying to do uh, measures in the short term, in the middle term, and in the long term in order to decarbonize our economy. And for this circular economy, it's a very important approach for the country in order to use the resources wisely to um, reduce um, waste and also to uh, reactivate our economy in a post-COVID era, but do it in a green way, in a sustainable way. And I think this is how decarbonization and circular economy are um, two uh, feet in order to walk this important path of the decarbonization and reactivation. And um, it's interesting because obviously, yes, the context of Costa Rica is that you, I think you have, you're, it's, it's true that you're nearly 100%, your electricity is nearly 100% powered or 100% powered by renewable energy. And for many people, when they think about climate goals and climate change, energy is the picture, right? It's, it's well, okay, mm -hmm. so 100% renewables, great, you're, you're done. And what the ambition of, the, of Costa Rica says is actually that's just part of the way, that's part of the story. There's also this industry picture and that's where circular economy plays in. Exactly. Now, we have that competitive advantage, I would say, of having this electric matrix uh, that is clean, but then we can do is we can impact other areas of the economy, such as transportation. We can electrify our transportation because we import the fossil fuels and we have clean energy that is produced in Costa Rica. So we can um, also impact positively our economy and also we can uh, electrify our industry. So we, that would reduce the, uh, the CO2 emissions, but also it will reduce the cost of this industry. So we are aiming for a green reactivation of the economy in a post-COVID era. So we heard from Rose at CTCN on the opportunity that Latin America has to systemically switch its models of industrialization, and from Rolando in Costa Rica about the role of circular economy in helping them to manage their economic recovery and meet climate goals. Next up, we're going to hear a bit more about this Latin America and Caribbean Circle Economy Coalition. We'll be speaking to Adriana from the UN's Environment Programme, and she'll be talking about how did the coalition come about and who are some of the actors involved. The day I was talking actually with my colleagues that I'm sharing the panel today, I was talking to Nicole from the Conrad Adenauer Foundation and she was telling me on the study they were doing on mapping circular economy policies. That same day I talked to Luisa and she's telling me about other study that they wanted to, to start and it was so much interlinked. And that same week, UNIDO was organizing a, a uh, the Circular Economy Forum for the Southern Corn, and I say, oh God, we are doing too much, <laughs> too many things, we are duplicating, I say, and this is when this idea of the coalition came, and I say, we need to do a coalition, we need to join forces, and that's how I started to contact each of the partners, so CTCN, for example, we were already working with them in some of the countries they are supporting. Uh, then the IDB was supporting the uh, Alliance, the Pacific Alliance on Plastics, Helen MacArthur, as I mentioned, then we brought the Conrad Adenauer, PACE, uh, UNIDO, and the World Economic Forum. 
I was very happy to see really that all these eight institutions were keen in cooperating. Nobody was like defending the agenda or saying no. So on the contrary, we say it makes sense really to bring together all our resources, our expertise in avoiding duplications and really making a bigger impact and offer to the countries a more coherent uh, policy support. And so to make the story short, we all came together and make a concept note uh, for the coalition that was presented at the Regional Forum of Ministers of Environment here in Latin America and the Caribbean. So we brought this proposal like, what about if we create this regional coalition on circular economy? And I was very happy to see that countries say, yes, the first thing is, yes, we need a platform where we can exchange knowledge among countries in the region and maybe the ones like Chile, Colombia, Ecuador that had already their strategies can share that with other countries. The second uh, request was we need to have an own vision. What is circular economy in Latin America? As Luisa said, no, it's one, the region with the mega biodiversity. Are we using that? I mean, a, country, a region with the extractive economy. So what does it mean? What are our opportunities, challenges? And the third message one was really interesting and coming from the Caribbean was circular economy has to look at the region and not only national territories, because at the end of the day for countries in particular in the Caribbean, that also has implications of cooperation, trade, etc. So here is when the countries gave us a green light and say, yes, do that. And, and then during 2020 last year, we were really coming together in doing the TORs and the last thing, just to say, bring in champion countries, because we want this coalition to be driven by countries and responding to their priorities. So then is when we were very happy to have now in the string committee, Colombia, Costa Rica, Dominican Republic and Peru. So Latin America is a resource abundant region. And as Luisa said, it does need a different starting point for the circular economy. But this is still fundamentally about designing differently from the outset and those three core principles, eliminate waste and pollution, keep products in use and regenerate natural systems. And there's an opportunity, we've heard there's an opportunity in the region to use circular economy to help to stimulate economic recovery, to meet climate goals and to ensure sustainable development. We hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. Do subscribe to our channels. If you want to watch the full interviews, we'll put the link to that in the description. And if you really want to do us a favor, like and share this video.